Uh, first of all, I want uh, to thank Professor Chen Jinghua and uh, other uh, organizers of the conference for giving me this uh, precious opportunity to pay tribute to Professor uh, Antonino Forte. So I had uh, the great fortune to meet him uh, in person in Kyoto uh, 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 quite a long time ago. And the encounter uh, was uh, like uh, uh, we Chinese often said, Ru Mo Chen Feng, but in true uh, uh, sense. So uh, today uh, the topic uh, uh, of my presentation is uh, killing the enemies by using a human refuge. So in uh, Tibetan tantric uh, Buddhist ritual, uh, which was transmitted in Tengu Tisha and the Mongol uh, Yuan time. Uh, uh, it's needless to say, as you're killing the enemy, uh, by through the using a uh, human effigy is a sort of a, a universal a religious uh, phenomena. And uh, we see that uh, in ancient Greek, uh, Indian, also in, in China. I think we, uh, 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 I think latest in already in the uh, Han Wu Di time, the Wu Gu, uh, the, the people are used to, to, to manufacture uh, human effigy and a, and a and then uh, through some uh, religious uh, or superstitious uh, ritual and uh, to uh, kill the enemies. Also, I'm uh, very much uh, surprised to, to find uh, this kind of, uh, how to say, the, the religious uh, uh, practices still actually used uh, in current days. I think uh, maybe one month ago, I uh, saw on, 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 on the paper uh, uh, somebody uh, uh, is doing this ritual. So in, in Wuhan, China, where the, the pandemic uh, still uh, was, was uh, started. And uh, uh, a Chinese woman and, uh, surprisingly found out in her neighbor's uh, balcony and they hand her effigy. And she was uh, very surprised and uh, reported to the policeman. So it's still <laughs> ongoing. But uh, so my uh, uh, study uh, goes back uh, to the uh, Tengu Tisha time. So uh, uh, you may know that uh, uh, next to Dunghua manuscript, we uh, uh, had the great uh, manuscript treasure. Uh, uh, in uh, Kalakoto, at the, at the same time, I think the, the, the Russian explorer uh, Kozlov uh, discovered uh, uh, a group of Chinese Tengut and, and uh, Tibetan uh, text in Kalakoto. So, no, uh, uh, actually, in, 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 in the border area between the Inner Mongolia and, and the Outer Mongolia. And uh, since uh, quite a long time, I'm studying uh, this text. And uh, uh, several years ago, I, to my great surprise, I discovered a text uh, which uh, uh, temporarily I, I called it Yu Hu Shen Qiu Xiu. It's sort of like a yogic uh, practices or the yogic uh, ritual uh, of the uh, deity of desire. And this text uh, was uh, given uh, the, the name of also, uh, it was uh, called Xi Tian Ban Zhi Da, Da Chen Jiu Zhe, Bai Ma Sang Bo Wa, that means it was the Indian uh, Pantida, uh, the great uh, city, uh, Siddha, um, Pamasambawa. So that's the, the first and also the only text uh, we have found. Uh, it, it was supposed to be uh, written uh, directly uh, by the, the great uh, Tantric Buddhist master uh, Pamasambawa uh, was, was uh, and in Chinese. And uh, this text uh, is a unique one. And we often, uh, if we think about Tibetan Tantric Buddhism, we often thought uh, 
the text, uh, this kind of practice is quite sort of noble and, and meditative or very much like the, 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 the tantric of, of the, the highest uh, yoga practices. But uh, this text uh, altogether includes uh, 38 uh, uh, practices or the rituals which all I think concerns the the uh, our everyday life and uh, from sort of a teach you uh, how to attract a woman for example and uh, and how to make a, a benefit uh, a profit when you uh, uh, doing your business or uh, the one that I am going to talk about so how to uh, kill your enemy uh, through uh, um, um, manufacturing or drawing uh, and human effort of uh, your uh, your enemy and, uh, and then uh, do the uh, uh, the whole process of, uh, of of the of the tantric ritual for example to uh, poison it and to uh, or how to say uh, use the the, the needles uh, to uh, to attack uh, the the human refuge or uh, reciting the, the mantras. And uh, as I said, uh, it, it's very unique and very unusual. So I, at the beginning, I did not even believe uh, that a Tibetan a tantric Buddhist text. I suspect it may be a Chinese uh, fabrication or the, 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 the Wei, Wei Jing, uh, the pseudo uh, text, just attribute the name to uh, Pamasambhava, because uh, this is also the, the earliest uh, Nyingma Ba text uh, found in Chinese translation. And uh, because uh, why it's uh, unique, and uh, 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 as I said, because it's uh, the, the practice of a, a uh, killing enemy uh, by using uh, 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 human refuge is uh, uh, universal. So we uh, found a lot of the, like a similar uh, text in, in Chinese. But uh, uh, one thing like uh, uh, strikes me and I started to believe that's a real one uh, because in the text, uh, uh, the term in Chinese to uh, uh, how to say, uh, uh, to signify uh, the, uh, the hu human refuge is called li yu, the yuan ren li yu xing, the whole, whole, whole the ritual of making a human refuge is called the yuan ren li yu xing, yuan ren is the enemy, and the li yu actually uh, uh, corresponds uh, to the Sanskrit word, the linga, so the, the linga means the mark, in, in Tibetan means 10 and uh, that indicates its uh, Indian origin I think the, then uh, uh, it cannot be uh, actually uh, simply uh, fabricated by Chinese and the, the why the linga was, was transcript uh, into Chinese as a liyue and it uh, uh, actually perfectly fits the uh, a phonetic uh, pronunciation uh, of the Chinese words uh, in, in the Tengu Te Xia time. And uh, uh, later I, I will say, uh, I discovered another text, uh, another actual full text, uh, uh, which uh, in the same uh, Kalakoto collection, uh, but uh, of, the, of the Mongol Yuan origin is a text uh, uh, of the deity practice of, uh, of the, the famous uh, protective deity uh, uh, Maha, Mahagala. And in this text, uh, the similar practices was, uh, uh, appeared. And, uh, and the, the equivalent uh, word uh, for the linga is transcript uh, or transliterated as uh, linga, and that's again. The Lingge uh, is a Chinese transcription uh, uh, of the Indian, uh, the Sanskrit word Linga, and that also reflects the, the Yuan uh, uh, phonetic uh, pronunciation. So Lingge is a, is a Liyue. So 
then uh, this text, I think, is a, I said, the importance of, of, of this, the significance of the text is uh, 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 very obviously because this is a, uh, I would say, that's the first and the only text uh, we can know really attributed to uh, Pema Sambhava and the, the founding father of Tibetan Tantric Buddhism. And, uh, and then uh, we uh, also, uh, through this text, uh, we uh, are informed that the Tibetan Buddhism, which w w was spread uh, among the Tanguts and the Uyghurs and the Chinese in the Tanguts Sha time, was not all about uh, uh, like the, the way, like, like way, uh, 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 previous thought is all those uh, uh, how to say the, the practice of uh, the uh, the highest uh, yoga tantra or all about the meditative uh, practices or all about the uh, philosophical discourses but the more like uh, this uh, uh, text or this uh, this ritual of of more practical purpose. So it's, it, and uh, then I started to, uh, 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 to, to, to attempt to uh, uh, identify the Tibetan original uh, because this text is, uh, uh, even in Chinese trans, uh, translation, is uh, it's very difficult to understand and uh, very, very difficult to, uh, uh, to uh, identify a lot of terms, uh, what does that mean? But it, it's very unsuccessful. So far, uh, I only found one uh, similar text uh, in Tibetan, but then, uh, because there actually there's no uh, uh, text uh, uh, really written and transmitted directly by uh, Pema Sambhava in Tibetan. And it's very fortunate, so I discovered uh, uh, as a full uh, Chinese text is all uh, belong to the same category of so-called Da Hei Chiu Xiu Bing Zuo, Zuo Fa. That's a ritual text on the invocation and the practice of a Mahakala. So as you know, Mahakala was the most important uh, uh, protective deity of the Mongol Yuan time. The success of, of a Mongolian conquest of, of the world is a very much uh, thank uh, uh, thankful to to the practice of of a Mahagala, but uh, in the, the this ritual text of Mahagala, there appears the same practice of this uh, uh, killing enemy ritual by using uh, uh, the human refuge. And uh, so far, I found the four. That's all. all this, you see the, the difference. Uh, the, is, is of the Mongol Yuan origin, as not as like the first time, first text is of, of the Tengu Sha origin. It's a, a full text. Then I also, uh, uh, as a usual uh, practice, I try to identify the Tibetan original of those texts. Uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, it's very difficult. And in the, there's no such text among the Tibetan canon, the Gaju uh, and, and the Denju. Also, uh, I didn't uh, find them in uh, the, the Sumbuns, the collected works of the early uh, Tibetan, uh, the, the Buddhist masters, in both in, in Nimaba and, uh, and the Sakyapa uh, 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 tradition. But it's, it's very uh, fortunate Actually, uh, as in recent years, uh, a, a Russian scholar uh, is as Alexander Zurin, and he is working in the uh, uh, Russian Academy and in the Institute for, for Oriental Studies in St. Petersburg. And uh, he discovered uh, a sort of a, a scroll of Tibetan manuscripts uh, pres uh, preserved in St. Petersburg. And uh, this, uh, tip, the, the whole uh, group of Tibetan text was uh, uh, ignored or uh, was, was wrongly uh, attributed to the Dunhuang text. But, but uh, for a long time, nobody was working on this text. But uh, 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 Professor Zulin, so he discovered it. And then he uh, uh, published it also in, in uh, 2015, 
um, excuse me, uh, uh, I, Professor Sen, your time I, is almost over. Okay. And then I think uh, uh, I uh, had the chance to uh, look at those texts and, and then found out actually this, the, the Tibetan text exactly the, the Tibetan original of those four uh, Chi Yuan Chinese translations of the, the deity, uh, the yogic practice of, 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 of Mahagala. Then I started to, uh, uh, to uh, compare the, the Tibetan text with the Chinese and help me to understand uh, all those, uh, uh, the, the, those terms uh, in Chinese translation and I understood now uh, very well the whole process of this yogic practice uh, by uh, killing or the liberating uh, enemies uh, uh, by using the human refuge. So then I just come to, so this, uh, this, the work is uh, still a very uh, preliminary. So I, what I, I, I try to do is first is I do the, the philological, uh, the comparison of, of the both versions of the text and to make the Chinese text uh, readable and uh, understandable. And then to trace the, the transmission lineage of, of this text uh, from Indian uh, to Tibet and to, to, to uh, 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 Tangut Sha and to Mongol uh, Yuan time and uh, uh, like uh, to reconstruct the, the history of, of the, of, of the uh, transmission. And the third actually uh, what I want to do, do is uh, the, uh, to figure out the real uh, origin of uh, this kind of religious uh, practice of, of using a, a human effigy that's, uh, that was uh, truly uh, transmitted from Indian or, or uh, like uh, uh, incorporated with the uh, older Tibetan, uh, this, this, this uh, Bumbo religious tradition, or even I think uh, has some uh, Chinese element uh, in these practices. So this is a very uh, preliminary uh, uh, research. So thank you for your attention.